Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by creative director Stella Falaco, the incredible woman behind Falaco House, a family home and wellness blog. Hi Stella, thank you so so much for being here. For those who don't know, we recently worked together on building out your website. So maybe you can just start by telling us about Falaco House and what you're all about and what this project was all about. Hi Chloe, thank you for having us. Um... We're, I'm really excited to talk about the site. Um, I know that both of us have been working really hard on it and I'm really happy with the results. Um, thus, I wanted to go ahead and have a talk with you so that we can share um, this whole process with everyone. Um, I think in order to answer that question, I kind of have to backtrack a little and start from where the concept of it all came from. So, I have been working since I was 13 years old, and I feel that what I've learned this entire time is that my experience has been nonstop. Like, I never really get a time to... Just that one? That one? Can you give me one minute? I've never really had a time to, to stop and think things through. It's always been go, 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 go. So... I've done sales, I've done um, concierge work, I've done paralegal work, all kinds of different jobs. And the last one being the one that I wanted to, or so I thought I wanted to be the career that I did for the rest of my life. And I realized that while I did enjoy entertainment, I was not, um, I didn't, I didn't enjoy creating stuff that I didn't personally care about or wasn't pa as passionate about. So that's part of the reason why uh, I decided to go my own route. And part of the website is uh, sales oriented, but it's uh, selling items that, that we use and that we're, we very much enjoy. Um, and the topics are all things that are part of our life. And so is very important to us as well. Uh, so that was key. And I was allowed, uh, I want to say I was allowed the privilege, but it was really just a matter of luck that when I, I graduated, uh, I found that I was going to be a mom. And luckily, I was able to be a stay at home mom throughout my entire pregnancy and to this day, uh, which gave me a lot of time to process what my next move would be and how I wanted to go about doing that. I think that allowed me to really figure out what it is that I wanted to do. And, um, and I found out that becoming a mom was like the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And so I wanted to go ahead and make uh, my new, my second job, I should say, about blogging about my life and, uh, and hopefully building a community to help other moms and other parents and other people that aspire to be a parent someday or that just want to do things a little differently. So that's where that started. And so Falaco House is a combination of... Aww. Where's Papa? It's Papa. Or do you want to sit here and you want to talk? I feel like uh, for, this is Frankie's show now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you have to say? Hmm? Can you say, hi, I'm Frankie. Hi, I'm Frankie. <laughs> say hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Frankie. Is this our show now? We'll just have What's a conversation. Your What's your name? That's My Chloe. name's Chloe. She's on the other side looking at you. Oh. Hi, Devin. It's so lovely to meet you. And, um, so everything you shared, it sounded like becoming a mom and becoming a parent really was like a defining moment in your career where you thought about, you took a step back and you really thought about what it is that you wanted to do and the message that you wanted to share. Do you think that was the case? And how did it change? Like, what was your mindset before having um, Frankie? And then how did it change afterwards? Definitely. I think um, one of the biggest uh, things that you learn is, I don't, I don't know if it's the same for becoming, when, uh, when you're becoming a father, but I know that for me personally, becoming a mother almost turned me into a completely different person, but in a good way, at least in my perspective. 
um, because it it just gave me uh, that push, which I think happens to a lot of moms. It gives you that push to really get going and do what it is that you aspire to do. Um, mm -hmm. I guess when you're and you know you're single, you're young, and you're just career driven, you think you have all the time in the world, mm -hmm. and it just flies right by once you hit motherhood. Um, I think that, you know, having started uh, the work life so early on, I had so much experience in the work field that I was able to figure out the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like. I know I'm really good at sales, but I don't like selling just random things. I don't want to push a sale to make a commission, uh, to, to make some kind of, to meet some kind of expectation for my boss. Get down there. Hmm. Mommy's, you see, mommy's on the camera. Mommy's putting, doing something for, for the website that you shall one day hopefully want to take over. <laughs> uh, then, you know, hospitality. I love being informative. I love helping people out. But I learned that where I was doing it wasn't my cup of tea. Um, it, it had, it has to be on my own terms and, and having the opportunity to do it from home um, and to not be pressured to go and clock in and clock out, you know, to somebody else's business. Uh, it just was, to me, it just seemed like, okay, I could totally, I have to figure out a way to do this every day um, and not affect the quality of my life because gosh, you know, when I was pregnant and I was just thinking about what am I going to do when I go back to work? What kind of work am I going to do when I go back to work? Um, having had the experience towards the end of my, um, my college uh, years, it was very stressful. And I learned that there's an ugly side to all of this. And I feared that if I were to go back into it, once I, you know, gave birth and I was ready to go back to work, was I going to be able to balance my mental and emotional health as a, as a woman? And then on top of that, take on all this other new stuff, the hormones and the, just the whole change of becoming a mom that happens that you have no control of that is so new and unfamiliar territory. I don't think I would have done as, as good a job. Mm -hmm. And so I was really thankful at that. And I really wanted to, express that and be able to show and 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 tell that story of that advantage that I had because uh, so here's another thing I feel like up until maybe just I don't know maybe a decade or so ago like growing up as a woman or as a female you have this this um stigma that you're to be to be a strong woman you you have to be independent grab a career you know do all these things the way that has been said to be done. And when I got to that point in my life, I realized, dude, I need to dump all of this out of my head, and redo the whole thing, because this doesn't really seem realistic to me. It doesn't, it doesn't make me happy. And there's got to be a different way. Um, and it just, it was just like meant to be because yeah. I just went with my gut on like not rushing to get back into work and really thinking it out and something great came out of it. And, uh, and I hope that that kind of leaves a trail behind to kind of, uh, give other people like a reference point that you don't have to go for that, you know, successful career path that, has been imprinted in our minds since we started school um that pressure that you have it's it's not it's not meant to be this way you know and so this is kind of where Falako House stemmed from was what is authentic to me what is authentic to my family what do we enjoy the most um and how can I make it all make sense yeah well, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me, especially a couple of things you said. One, the the idea that we have kind of been given this um, this like guide on how life should be. And we're told that these are the rules that we need to follow. And you're right, it doesn't work for everyone. So you have to get to that point of 
sort of unlearning all that behavior before you you stop and think okay well what's right for me and it's funny because um it sounds like pregnancy was a big part of you stopping and, and looking around and thinking about all that but it's interesting when you think about this year because a lot of people have had to just stop and they've never done that before like they've never even just paused to take a breath and say hey like maybe this is not right whatever is going on this I'm not in alignment or this is not the right path for me um but the other thing that you said that um was really interesting is finding time to sort of balance this all because to me looking in on it from the outside you do everything you know you do the home and wellness you've got music you've got um artistic collaborations going on you do it all as well as being a mom and a wife and taking care of your family so how do you balance all of that you know actually I don't I don't think I do enough and and I I give myself a hard time about it. And Devin always has to call me out on it. Like relax, you know, look at what you've done. And even in just the daily tasks, um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned or that this whole thing has taught me is patience. And, and that's how I go about um, trying to accomplish all the things that I want to do in a day, in a month, in a year, you know, I've learned the easiest way to do it or to feel accomplished when you're, you know, taking care of an infant or even like right about to like give birth where you just can't even move or get up, get up from bed. It's just, you have to break things up into little pieces. Whereas before when I was younger, I just feel sound like I'm 80, right? Um, (laughs) When I was single and, and, even when Devin and I just first started dating, I was the type of person that if I don't, if I'm not constantly doing something, something's wrong. I feel terrible. I feel like, like, yes, my, my whole day is just off. So when I was transitioning into having a baby in the house, I was overwhelmed because I felt like what would normally take me, you know, 30 minutes was now taking me days, weeks to accomplish. And then I figured out, well, if I have this that needs to go on in this room and I have this that needs to go on in this room and I have this that I got to fix in this room, when I'm in this room with the baby, I'm going to get this and this done. When I'm in this room, then I'll take care of that. And when I'm in that room, I'll take care of that. Instead of trying to do it all at once or trying to, where I would normally be able to do it in one day, I'm now breaking it up of whenever I'm in this room, I do this. And whenever I'm in this room, I do this. And that's how, that's pretty much how, Um, I'm able to get so many things done. I'll set myself up where I want to work on the living room. I want to work in the kitchen and I'll, I'll set the week up going, okay, this is what I want to do here. And this is what I'm going to set myself up to do. Forget about everything else, even though it's still pending in the back of my mind. It's just like, take care of what you got here and know that it's not going to happen from top to bottom. You might have to start from the top, go in the middle, go back to the top, then go to the bottom, you know, but as long as it gets done in broken up pieces, it eventually will all come together and it'll get done. So that's, that's the thought process that I have to be able to get all these things done. Um, Not to kill myself over not executing it the way that I normally would have done it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, and, and that in and of itself is like a mind struggle. Yeah. is re-teaching yourself like okay you used to do things like this but now you have to do them like this um, yeah so that's it's kind of I- giving yourself permission too right like I don't feel I feel like it's really hard to give yourself permission not to do it perfectly and not to do everything and get all of it done all at one time and, and permission to just be messy about the process sometimes because it is messy. Like, that's right. life. Yeah, you just got to, for somebody who's always about order, teaching yourself not to be orderly is is insane. But it, <laughs> yes. but it, can, have, it can be done. Um, and I know it because I, I've done it. Um, and, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's one of those things where it's like, I, and you could tell me, but I know from me, I have to be really organized. So 
trying to unlearn that is like this this really hard battle and then when you get to the other side you're like oh this was worth going through that because now I can experience life in a different way and I'm more open and it's almost like you gain more freedom and time from just doing that rather than being so regimented all the time I mean you have two choices you can be stressed out about it, be miserable, or you can just accept it and make it work. And I think that that's one of the other things that I feel are very important um, that I want to be able, that I want to, uh, for it to show in this whole uh, Falaco House project is that, you know, there's no perfect way to do it, but if you want to do something differently, it's still it can still be done you just have to give it the time that it needs yeah that's a good that's a good message to share with people I think what has been the hardest lesson so far in this whole journey that you've been on to date what do you think is the most difficult thing that you've um kind of had to work through or overcome my biggest problem and we've kind of touched this on uh, touched a little on this is 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 my patience. I'm a very impatient person. I am very um, goal oriented. And so when things when I set deadlines up for myself, and you know, also, this is also coming back from from what I from school, you know, from being trained in journalism, you, you got to get the, the first news, you got to get the news first, you got to upload it, you got to you know, meet all these deadlines, it's all very deadline driven. And so for me, that was the hardest thing to, to get through. I mean, it's something I still now that I've kind of like become not an, I'm not no, novice anymore to, to the idea of a baby. Uh, yeah. It's still something that I struggle with because yes, now I I've kind of like, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to get the feedings in the, the diaper changes, the sleep patterns, all this stuff I've learned. So now you feel like, okay, you got this. Um, so you take on a couple more different challenges and with that comes again not meeting deadlines or or not executing things that you want to uh, in the order that you want to do it uh so you just have to again be patient and that to me has been and, and continues to be the one thing that i have to remind myself of that i need to be better at is just to be more patient um that has been my <laughs> my number one uh struggle so when you do that and you're talking about all this stuff, do you like write it down and plan it or do you just have it because you you're so used to doing this, it's habitual now that you just like have it in your mind and you just go with it? I do a little bit of both. It, it really just depends on how much I'm trying to tackle at that moment because I do find myself making notes or writing things down, um, but I'm not consistent with it. So I can't say that I'm one or the other. I feel like it just depends on my mood. It just depends on what I've got going on. Um, yeah. But but I like the idea of, of writing things down because what I do enjoy about it is as you're checking things off and then you go back and you look at all your things that you've crossed off and all your little check marks, I feel like it really helps to give you that boost of like, I did it, you know, like I did yeah. a lot and, I, and I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, like celebrating the small wins that you sometimes take for granted because you just don't feel like you're maybe doing as much as in your mind you wanted to get done or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. that's huge. Do you think that the wellness side that you, as you dive deeper into that, um, do you think that that helps with that? Oh, yeah, I was thinking about this while we were talking uh, about like how do I, pro- like, go through the process of not stressing myself out and the things that have helped me. And in my mind, I'm going, thank God for the oils, because um, to use them as aromatherapy, just that in of itself has been tremendously helpful. Um, So much that even my husband that at the beginning was like a skeptic and just was like, (laughs) dude, you've lost your mind. What's wrong with you? Well, now, you know, compliment like, oh, I love that smell or I can you put this one on or, you know, I'll make him blends of whatever I feel like he needs and he'll actually use that. 
them, which is like a big step for someone like him, you know? So it definitely, uh, and, and this is why, like, I think it's important, or for me, it was important to make that a part of the site um, because we're just very, like, average, everyday people. Um, so where I feel like even I'm, I'm coming from, like, before we started using oils, we we were skeptics or we didn't really understand it and we didn't think that it was something that would fit into our you know life yeah and being how we are you know it totally did and so I feel like if we show people like hey look it's just Devin and Stella but they use the oils something must be something good must come out of it and and they must really benefit from it and let's see what that's about and that's kind of what we want to do because it, it has helped us out a lot. Um, yeah. And, and you can just feel it in your home. It's It sets the mood. Uh, and yeah, it, it, like, because this is so new to us, uh, the, the new home ownership and a new baby, uh, okay. we were definitely able to see and feel the, the difference between using them and not using them. Yeah. I think that's really, really big. One of the things that you said when we were working on the site that you really reiterated over and over again, um, and I'm going to show people the website just now, just so you can have a look at it yourself. Um, but one of the things you really talked about in, in Drill Tome is like you were not wanting to tell people what to do or how to live their life. Your message was very much like, this is how we do things. Let us share our journey and take what you can from it. We want to be a reference point. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Because I think that's a really powerful message to share, especially for those who are new parents and are this is all new to them. Sure. Um, so it's, I have to, I'm, I'm a kind of, I'm the kind of person that likes to speak like without any filters and that's some times is uh not does it, it gets me in trouble a lot of times but there's uh there's something that I really think is priceless and that's peace of mind and just like not feeling guilty about um not being honest because I suck at lying for one and it's too much work right mm -hmm. so I just feel like if it I is. just keep my mind if I just say exactly how I feel then there's no there's no need to go back I mean, I'm not saying that I don't make mistakes and there aren't times where I have to be, you know, where I have to say, look, I said the wrong thing and I got to apologize for that. I'm willing to do that. That's something that I'm that I'm willing to do in order to just make sure that I'm being genuine with myself and genuine with the people that are around me. Um, but so it stemmed to me from the experience of having just brought a baby into the world and feeling like the people that I would have expected to be more um, understanding and supportive, uh, those were the people, some of those people were the ones that actually uh, said or did things that were very hurtful. And being someone that had just given birth and going through all these hormonal changes, like I took it, I, it was very like intense for me and I took it to the heart. Uh, a lot of these, um, this feedback or the, this negative energy that I received and what I, what I felt I needed to do in order to correct that was to, um, explain that that is something that a mom goes through and that people need to be sensitive, uh, as to the choices that the mom is taking for the baby once they're born, you know, if they choose um, not to have visitors if they, you know, whatever choices they decide at the beginning when they're just having, you know, the responsibility of this baby, whatever choice they decide to make, that is their choice and there should be no judgment and you should allow the person that freedom because we all get it. Anybody who becomes a parent should be entitled to that freedom. And I feel like um, to no fault of the their own uh, members or even end up um, hurting uh, hurting a new parent's experience because in my mind I feel they just forget you know they forget what it's like mm -hmm. to be a new parent they forget all the little things that happen and 
there's a sense of like wanting to share how they do things or, or how they know things to be done. But in, in that same token, you have to be careful in how you, uh, how you deliver that message because it could be taken the wrong way and it could harm somebody's experience. And so that's why I wanted to make sure that if I decided that I wanted um, to talk about what I want, what I wanted our content to consist of was to um, showcase us as parents, you know, to ex express ourselves, our experience that we didn't make it come across as giving advice because that's like the worst thing ever um, yeah. uh, or telling people what to do or to make it seem like our way is the right way because it's not mm -hmm. our way is just our way you know and so you're like I want people to go on the site and go you know I didn't I never I never knew about that or I didn't think about that and let me try it you know that mm -hmm. sort of uh is what I really want people to um how I want people to engage the site. Um, so, so when we say we want to be a reference point, that's pretty much where we're going at is just to be um, conscious and just to be sensitive to everyone's experience as a parent or as like a new homeowner or whatever. Um, that, that was very important to me because it, that's my way of like balancing out the karma um, yeah. and, and being able to resolve the resentment that I held for like, the first six months of, of Frankie being here. And, and it was that in, in and of itself was very hard because I, I didn't want to hold down that resentment. So it was very challenging. And so, yeah, that's why it was a very important thing for me to make sure that, that we made that a point very yeah. clearly. And I think that we did that with your help. I think you definitely did that too. And it comes across in everything you share um, on your Instagram as well, not just on and on Facebook, not just on the website, you really are pretty consistent across the board on that. And I think that's powerful for parents, but also just in general, I think that we can all learn from that because there are a lot of people giving out advice. And sometimes people just need you to say, hey, I see you, I've been where you are at. Um, I know it's difficult or I know that there are these challenges, but let's share this journey so that you can feel like you're not alone and we can kind of do this together. And even just that, I think, is really powerful, especially for I, I've never given birth, so I've not gone through that experience. I only know from friends that that is a, a big chapter in your life. And I'm I feel like that your body's going through all this stuff, but it's just, it's such a big transition. And I think sometimes um, as a woman, because you're, you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that whole process, you can feel somewhat lonely, um, even if you have a lot of people around you. And so being able to have this reference point in this place where people can come and just learn and, and be part of that community is so, so powerful. I know you said in another video that you felt like you didn't have that when um, you were going through your pregnancy. So, so even just taking that step to say, hey, okay, well, I didn't see this around anywhere, so I'm going to go and create it for others. That's huge. Yeah. Um, that, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so, it just the way things rolled out, I was pretty much like learning everything on my own, doing my own research. Um, and I, I mean, even to this day, we get little to no help with any of this um, yeah. whole family life. But I feel that that's awesome because it's making us that much stronger. And I feel like we're able to um, really hone in the whole parenting thing and the husband the marriage uh, hone in on on everything and and experience it on a on a different level that I feel like when there's too many hands in the pot it just gets kind of washed off washed away and, or we we don't get from it as much um mm -hmm. as as we would have wanted to and you know and everybody's different so like maybe that's what people certain people want and that's that's great but for us, it was more like we kind of like to do things our own way. We like to do it. We like to do things on our own. Um, so this is kind of like this um, 
like almost like this magazine. This is this kind of magazine. Uh, this yeah. is the one where if you want to do things on your own, if you want if you want to do your own research and you don't really want to rely on anybody's help, this is this is this what you want to read. Um, so that's kind of the angle we took. Yeah. So is that like if you had to think about what the key message you want to share with others who might be on a similar path? And say they haven't uncovered your website yet and they're just watching this for the first time. What would you want to share with them? Um, I think what I would want to share with them is just to remind or just kind of open up the, the possibility that your idea may sound bizarre. It may not um, be something that you have uh, evidence that has been successful, that um, that is profitable, or, you know, that you feel, um, just if you ever have any doubts on any idea that you have, uh, I think now more than ever, we can realize that that's actually a good thing, and that you should go through with whatever idea you have, because that's how we continue to be innovative. You don't want to kind of go th through um, something that's already been done. So in order to do that, you, you literally have to take that little idea that makes no sense or that you feel makes no sense to you, but for some reason you really like it or you're intrigued by it, run with it. Um, because that may ultimately be the thing that makes you feel the most fulfilled, um, the most accomplished. And I tell you what, I feel completely satisfied with having made the decision to go this route. Um, and so I do want to be kind of like, like I said, a reference point or an example of doing just that is going your own route. Yeah, I love that. I think that's the, the best message ever. And even just that word satisfaction, not a lot of people can say that about their life. Not a lot of people can say about that. About work. That, or about yeah or about anything and it also makes me think about you know you are really creative and you do go your own route and you try so many different things one of them being music and I know that you have done a lot of music in the past but you have also mentioned that you're working on two tracks so can you talk a little bit whatever you can share about that music and what we can expect just a little insight anything you can share yeah, uh, so there is on YouTube or in the web, there's an old video of when I was uh, interning at the Breakfast Club. And it was it was, it was kind of crazy how it went down because all I was doing was just trying to uh, be a good sport in my job. And I volunteered myself for, for this one uh, episode that was the last thing that I thought I'd want to be known for or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, good did come out of it. And I feel like the main um, thing that I got out of it was just to ex express that to be yourself. Um, don't, don't quit on your dream. Uh, and so that um, episode turned out to really give me a moment of reflection over the years. And what I wanted to express um, was that, my experience in the music industry was not the greatest because I wasn't willing to sacrifice my own integrity to uh, feel like I owed, owed anybody favors in the business. And I just realized that I didn't enjoy it because I wasn't doing it my way. I wasn't having the creative freedom that I, that I desired or that I thought I was going to get. Um, it just started getting more and more or less and less about being creative and more and more about, um, being marketable. Uh, so while I enjoyed creating some of the music and the designing and, um, the visual aspect of, um, the music I was creating and performing, uh, I realized that if I was going to get back into it, what I, what needed to be, what was key for me is that I needed to have complete control of the whole thing. And that I didn't want to have the pressure of being marketable because that just killed it for me. Um, mm -hmm. Even though it's a very important thing, of course, I'm well aware of that. I don't think that the way that it is traditionally done is the right way for me. Yeah. So 
um, having had a long time off, I was able to um, go back and connect with the people that were actually um, enriched my experience. And luckily that we were, you know, both on the same page that we were ready to work on material again. So um, we've just kind of been working very slowly, but out of that, we've come out with, um, with two songs that are in the works. And, you know, once things get back and rolling with um, studios opening up and things just kind of getting a little bit back to normalcy, um, we'll, we'll do a formal recording. And I hope that um, people can appreciate the, um, the more acoustic angle that I'm taking on it this time around. That sounds exciting. So acoustic, that's what we've got. Anything else that you can give us a little teaser on? I It's kind of got this, um, <laughs> it's, believe it or not, I mean, for those of you who know, or those who may be watching and know kind of like my, what my music style has been in the past, it's, it's completely different now in the sense that it's got um, some kind of country tones to it. I, I want it to be more like country classic, but with a modern approach, just because what I realized that with these um, produced songs, when it came to performing them live, it was very um, technical and uh, almost like synthetic. And I like the idea of just having a guitar playing live, you know, and the drums and a piano or keyboard and just vocals as opposed to all this extra stuff that happens that you need, you know, in order to make it this humongous show that is not necessary because I feel it takes away from uh, the, the talent themselves um, enjoying it too. Uh, because you got to make sure all these things are working properly. And when you're in the zone, you don't have time for that. And I feel like that was something I wanted to kind of, stem away from yeah it's interesting because just throughout this conversation and all the conversations we've had it seems like a, a big thing that's happened for you is just stripping things back to the basics and very real and very raw and I think that's so beautiful because that's where you find like all the gems in life like it sometimes it's covered up with all this stuff like you say that really just takes away from what's at the heart of it and what's at the core of it, everything that you're doing. So it's, it's interesting to see that thread kind of like weave throughout everything that you're doing. Yeah, I mean, it goes to, it, I think I've done that pretty much in all aspects of my life, but down even to like the makeup I wear, because <laughs> I think um, what I've realized too is it's not about how much makeup you put on. It's about how much you don't need to put on. Like, what can you do <laughs> to avoid having to put that much makeup on to feel like you look beautiful? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I guess you're right. It has been a lot of me going back and going, you know what? This needs to go. This needs to go. This needs to go. And just feeling good at the end of it. Um less is best right that's definitely definitely I'm all for that message I agree with you so much on all of that um and I think that that's where you know everybody shines more if they just step out into themselves go on their own path which it sounds like that's what you're saying you know go on your own path do it your way you know focus on what matters most and um yeah I think what you're doing is so incredible and everyone should go check out your website. I'm going to share it one more time for everybody to see it. But is there anything else you would want to add with regard to your story and what you want people to know and take away from this? I feel like that's something that I want to be answered for itself um, over time. Uh, and more so the question that I one day hope to ask this one right Aww. here. Perfect timing. Look, mommy. Yeah, what is that going on over here? You for two minutes, maybe this. Look. Is there anything you want to share? <laughs> this put me on the spot, huh? Yeah. Um, well, what What are you excited about for the site? And do you have any questions for Chloe? I don't no, I don't think I have any questions. Um, I just I'm excited to see you uh, 
you know, move forward with this undertaking, this project that you've been working on for quite some time and putting a lot of effort and energy into. So it's exciting to see it, you know, take start and, and be exciting to see where it can go, where it goes. Why do you, I, I get, I'm going to put them on the spot again. Why do you um, feel that, because, um, so Devin's always been the type of person that has been very supportive of anything I put my, my heart on, like anything I set myself out to do. But he's also very quick to tell me when something doesn't seem, when something's just not, because well, he's, He's where the practical side of this of our um, brand goes. He's very practical, very simple. Um, and so, like, if something doesn't work, he's I always go to him to ask him if it's going to work or not, because he's good at that kind of of being able to determine those kind of things. Um, and when it came to building the site or even concepting, like what we were going to include in the site, um, there really wasn't any pushback from him. And so like, I'd like to know. That's because Chloe was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> she was telling you, we do it like this because of this. And we do this part like this because of this. And um, yeah, which is fine. Because as long as you have someone giving you that direction, then the function part comes in because mm -hmm. you're all about the form. Yes. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. You need both, right? You need form and function. Yes, that's true. That's very true. Chloe, do you have any questions for him? Um, I guess one question is how involved do you think you'll become with the site? And are you excited to be involved with the site to participate in the content creation and things like that? And that's just because I'm nosy that I'm asking that. Yeah, I, you know, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know how much I'll get involved with the site. I guess it just depends on how it goes and kind of what seems to be needed. Um, I feel like he is going to really come into play when it comes to like the home improvement or like just um, the product reviews. Um, just the other day, um, Christmas Day, he spent, he says three minutes, but it was more like 30 minutes <laughs> oh, God. Talking, to my, talking to my uh, my brother-in-law about the boots All that he got boots. for Christmas and why. <laughs> and I mean, he went into so much detail that, and he, and he does this so often that that's where the idea of the product reviews came in because that's really what we end up talking about a lot of the time. It's just different things that we buy or that we've tried or that we're considering and the reasons why? Well, it's like how many times do you get something, you you know, every most things are like ordered nowadays. So you're not physically seeing it in person before you buy it or a lot of times you don't at least. And then you get it and you're like, it looked different in the picture or I was expecting it to feel different or it was uh, bigger or smaller or it just, it's different than what you had anticipated. So, you know, a, a quality review can kind of. Yeah. And another thing that. too, that we, um, we kind of always are on the same page about is you go through these product reviews and there, you could just like skim forever in a day um, with just language uh, of people sharing what they think about the product. But we would, um, in most cases, what we end up, ended up doing is going and asking somebody we know like what do you think about this product have you used this before you know what did you like about it what did you not like about it and so it gives a more personal uh a personal review to me is more significant than some random you know written comment on on the product details or product uh, review section of of any um like amazon related product or whatever yeah, uh, I think so that's true. That's so, so true. And that's why I think blogging is so big nowadays as well. Like we might not trust Amazon or the people that review their products, but we'll 100% trust in someone that we, you know, know, like and trust on a personal level. We'll take their word as bond, right? So that's really huge. And I I, I know myself as well like if somebody I 100% all my purchases are based on somebody else's recommendation of telling me like you need this thing because otherwise I just wouldn't buy it <laughs> I just would be like nope 
Yep, everything is so saturated that you kind of need to need that, like narrow it down. And I feel like the best way to narrow it down is to get a, a personal re- recommendation. So we, yeah, that was one of the biggest things for us was to be able to do that for, you know, anybody who visits the site or anybody who knows us, who will run into one of our posts, uh, or anything we share any content we share that they have access to. Yeah, that's huge. Well, you've done such a good job of just you have all these different paths that that you follow and that you're walking down. And I think you're super women for being able to do it all. But I love that you now have it all in one site where you can share all of it. Make make sense of it all because to anybody I would just, you know, I feel like if I were to just have a conversation with anybody about these ideas and not have actually a, a place for it, it sounds like I'm reaching too far or that it's, you know, I need to like think it through further, but I'm glad that, you know, you were, I was able to connect with you and you were able to say, you know, I, we can do this and you made it work. Thank you so much for watching today's conversation between Stella and I. Part two is going to be released shortly, so be sure to hit subscribe and click the little bell icon so that you can be notified first when that video is released. In the meantime, please do leave a comment below and let us know what your biggest takeaway was from today's conversation. And head on over to stellafalaco.com so you can check out Stella's site for yourself and all the incredible things she has to offer. Thank you again for watching and being here with us today. Never forget, my friend, you have the power to change the world one connection and one conversation at a time.